Well, it, it was always it was always a plan to move on at some stage, and ideally, yes, of course, I'd have stayed until the end of the World Cup uh, and the Ashes. But in international cricket, there's always something around the corner. Yeah. There's always a series that makes you want to stay for longer. But this was just a good opportunity for me, chance to do something slightly different. Um, and you know, it, Warwickshire is a good club. Um, and it was a different role, so I was very keen to uh, to move into it. But uh, yeah, it, it's a shame when you move on, but um, you know, teams move on, players move on, new coaches come and go. That's the nature of uh, of cricket. <laughs> Obviously, the, the international game is the pinnacle; it's where everybody wants to be. But I, you know, I've been very lucky that you know I had two fantastic times with Sri Lanka. I've had a period with England, my own country. Um, so you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I. I I have no regrets at all. Um, I was really lucky that um, I was able to go out when I wanted to on my terms. I wasn't sacked, um, which happens. Um, and, and I just count myself very lucky to have had the time in international cricket that I had. I, I, I don't think so. I, I think um, you know that there's always an element of needing a, a new voice, a fresh voice to come into the team. And Trevor and I have been together now for four years. Um, and, you know, and he's quite happy that. You know, he's ready to move on at the end of the Ashes. He's done a brilliant job for England, as he did for Sri Lanka. You know, he got Sri Lanka to a World Cup final in 2011 in India um, and did a brilliant job for Sri Lanka, and he's done a brilliant job for England. So, uh, you know, th th these, uh, um, these last few years have been excellent. As I say, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, I really hope that Trevor and Morgs and Joe Root in the test side go on and have a brilliant summer. I'm still, you know, an England cricket fan at heart and I want England to do really well this summer and I, and I hope that Trevor goes out on a, a real high because he thoroughly deserves it. I, I think we, we both thought about the game, we both think about the game in a similar way but we're different people. Um, Trevor's quite quiet, uh, I may be the noisy one um, in, in the pairing but you know, we, we, I'd like to think we complemented one another very well. Um, Trevor, as I say, is very calm, um, very, very calm. Even when the team are not playing so well, he, he's very good under pressure. Um, and you know we, we work very well together. We enjoy one another's company. We thought about the game a lot. We talked about the game a lot, and we spent an awful lot of time around the world in coffee shops and hotels over a cup of coffee talking about the game of cricket. Um, and, and you know we, we both realised that we were very fortunate to be in the position with Sri Lanka to start with, um, and we really enjoyed that. And we've thoroughly enjoyed our time working with England. So, uh, you know, I, I've learned a lot from Trevor Bayliss, and without him, I wouldn't have had the opportunities I've had in world cricket. So, you know, I will always be very grateful to him for taking me to Sri Lanka when he went. Um, and, you know, as I say, we've had a great time working together, uh, and he thoroughly deserves all the, the respect that he has around the world because he's done a brilliant job for both teams. Well, we, we, we had no choice, really, but to change the way that we played. Um, I think the selectors were very brave that they made some big decisions. They left out some big players. We played a lot of cricket um, for England and, and successfully for England. But the, the team needed a change after that last World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. And Owen Morgan um, was reappointed as captain. Andrew Strauss came in as the director of cricket. And the first thing he did was to reappoint Owen as captain, which was definitely the right decision. He, he's been, I, I think he's been the single biggest factor because the way that he's led the side, he's very positive in the way that he talks, he's very positive in the way that he plays, and if the captain plays the way that he talks, the, the players get confidence in that. And you know, I think that you know, we, we sat down and worked out that we had to change the way we played, and not only did we have to change the way we played, we had to be a lot more on the front foot, a lot more positive about the way we played. And, and I think, as I say, you know, Owen and Trevor and Andrew Strauss take a lot of credit because Andrew had the, the vision, um, and Owen had the skill to take the team on, but you know that the team have developed, and, and now within the England team, you know there are a lot of match winners in that team who are quite capable of winning games for England, and, and that that gives the team, you know, a great chance of being successful in all conditions. I, I think it's always difficult when when you you know you look at the the fantastic players that Sri Lanka had for a period. So you know when, when you've got um, Sanath Jayasuri, when you've got Jamin Devas, you, you have. Um, 
Mahela, Sanga, Murali. You know, you, you have some fantastic players. Ajanta Mendis, absolutely magnificent. You know, then you have in there Dilshan, who, who was outstanding for Sri Lanka. Um, you know, that Chama was silver. You know, there, there's a lot of players. Um, Kapu Gedera. You know, there's a lot of players who were outstanding players for Sri Lanka. You don't suddenly replace players like that overnight. It takes time to replace players. And I think if, if there was any... Um, you know, if there was any criticism, it would be that the selectors maybe changed too often, so the actual selection group changed too often, and therefore the players changed too often, and it didn't give the players the opportunity to be... You know, Tirimani is a great example of somebody that um, should have been in the team and should have been playing for a lot longer. He was in the team, out the team, in the team, out the team, and, and I think you need to give people far more confidence by picking them and backing them and staying with them. If you do that, then I think you give the, the team a much better chance of being successful. Yeah, I, I think when I first went in 2007, there were 10 teams playing in the Premier Division. And then it went to 20 teams, it went to 14, then it went to 20. I, I think that you, you can have 20 teams, no problem whatsoever, if that's what you want to have. But then I think in the middle, there needs to be the provincial cricket to bridge the gap between club cricket and international cricket. Because unfortunately, there were too many teams where the gap is too big between first-class cricket, club cricket, and international cricket. And, I, and in, you know, in England, we've now got 10 first division teams. In Australia, you have six state teams. I, I think the teams that have fewer teams to pick from, so therefore the best players play together more often and against one another more often, that allows the best players to make an easier bridge into international cricket. So uh, either you have provincial cricket or you only have 10 first-class teams. Um, or you have 10 teams in the top division where the best players play against the best all the time. But, you know, the, the, I, I, think it's, I think the domestic cricket could be improved. I think sticking with the same group of selectors and therefore sticking with the same group of players is essential. Sticking with the same captain for a period of time, I think, is, is crucial as well. And making sure that, you know, p players go in and out of form. So don't drop a player when he goes out of form. Allow players to go out of form and come back into form, you know, and stick with people for as long as you possibly can. I, I think the talent is there in Sri Lanka. The talent has always been there in Sri Lanka, but players thrive on confidence. And if every time you have one bad game, you get dropped, and then you have one good game, or you're in for a game, then you get dropped again, players don't thrive on that. And Sri Lankan players thrive on being loved, on being wanted and having confidence. And if you give players confidence, they perform so much better and that's definitely the case with Sri Lanka and and, and that's where you know the, the, the great thing was that as players came into the team when you had Sanaf when you had Murali when you had Mahela and Sangha when players came in those great players around them allowed them to settle they, they took the job the, the best thing a senior player can do is take wickets and score runs so when you have those great players, when a young player comes in, it allows them time to settle. Yeah. So when Ajantha came in, he had Murali to work with. That allowed him to settle. When Rangana came into the side, you know, and Rangana Haraf went on to be one of Sri Lanka's greatest ever cricketers. But Rangana had Murali to work with. So when you've got senior players, then all of those players finish, and you then left with Chandimal Matthews, and they haven't got those great senior players. The only great senior player still playing is Lassif Malinga. And, and Lassif is still, because he's so passionate about Sri Lankan cricket, he's still trying very hard. But, you know, Lassif went through a period of being left out. You know, not this, not that. It wasn't this. It, well, it, it was never going to be, you know, able to bowl the same pace all his career. At some point, injuries were going to catch up with him. Age was going to catch up with him. But he's still such a warrior that he's still going. And, and, I, and I genuinely, I genuinely think if they'd have stuck with Chandimal and they stuck with Dick Weller, you know, on this series here in the World Cup, you know, you, you, you need your strong characters in your team and you need stability in your team. And that's the one thing I would always say that they could have done better over the last few years. I, I think that, you know, that they're just lacking a bit of confidence. I've watched the team play in this World Cup in a few games and I think they're lacking in confidence. And, you know, that the, the last game, the start that they had against Australia was fantastic. It was absolutely brilliant. I thought they played so well. Um, Dimuth, 
played brilliantly at the top of the innings. Um, and Kelsey Janis played magnificently as well. So, you know, they, they showed real quality at the top, but then they just lost their way a little bit in the middle. That's where I'm still convinced that if you had a good, solid pairing at the top, a good number three, Angelo at four, and then Kelsey Pereira coming in at five and, and floating in that five, that he could have then taken the game on to win the game. He could have taken the game on to win it. So, you know, I, I think that the, the, the team started with a, a real rock of confidence in Cardiff um, against New Zealand um, and then they won the next game against Afghanistan um, and I thought they played really well against Australia. I thought they showed real signs against Australia but you know, it, it's easy to be critical and say, should do this, should do that. But when a team's struggling for confidence and when you don't pick necessarily your best squad to come on a World Cup, you make it hard for the players. It's not lacking talent. What, what it's what it lacking, if anything, is backing the talent, giving the talent confidence. My, my experience of Sri Lankan players is they thrive on being given confidence. They thrive on being loved and wanted. And if you, if you put your arm around a Sri Lankan cricketer and you tell him he's a great player and you tell him that he's a good player and he's going to go and score runs, he's going to go and take wickets, they thrive on that, they love that. You know, all, all the players, it doesn't matter who it is, Mahela, Sangha, Murali, if you, if you help and support them and you give them the love that they want, they will perform for you. But if you're constantly being left out and worried about your place, you don't play with the same freedom and confidence. So if you play a big shot and you get out and you get dropped, well, you're not going to play big shots. So don't be surprised if people then try and just stay in and get a score. And once players try and just get a score and they play for themselves to get picked for the next game, that's not helping the team. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's not within... I, I don't think it's necessarily... And I'm not involved in the, the team at the moment, but I, it's more over the last few years, the confidence has been eroded in the players because the selectors have changed a lot and therefore the players have changed a lot. So if, you know, if the board, if SLC Cricket stuck with one group of selectors for four years and said they're the selectors for the next four years, stick to your job, you do your job really well, and then they stick with the same group of players as England have done. What England have done really well, the selectors, the same group of selectors went from the last World Cup through almost to this World Cup. It only changed a year ago, so pretty much four years of the same group of selectors therefore the same group of players and when players get selected to play in the squad and they start a series they pretty much know if they start in the first match they will play at least the next four games so therefore if they get out playing a big shot or they have one bad game as a bowler then they know they're going to play the next game so they get confidence in that and that allows the team then to get confidence because then players know their role in the team. Players love to know what their role is. Players will talk about clarity and by that they know that their job is to bat number four. And when I bat number four, this is what's expected of me. When I'm the second change seam bowler, I know that I'm going to bowl in the middle overs and I'm going to bowl at the end. If I'm the opening bowler, I bowl at the beginning and I bowl at the end. If I'm the spinner, if I'm Moeen Ali or Madil Rashid, I know when I'm going to bowl. So if you give people the confidence and you give them a, a job to do and you trust them to do their job, don't be surprised if they make a success of it. But if you're constantly changing, don't be surprised if players lose confidence. I, I, there were two reasons. One, because England offered me a position. Um, and at the time, I, I was under the, an impression that, that not everybody within Sri Lankan cricket was keen for me to stay. Um, and that they wanted somebody else. There was another group wanted somebody else, and again, the instability of the setup. Um, had you know, had it had it been said that you know I was wanted to stay um, long term, then I would have done. It wasn't until um, you know I, it was suggested I might be leaving, then it was oh we want you to stay. Um, so you know it, it, it was a shame at the time, um, but England was hard to turn down because England's my own country. Um, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time in Sri Lanka, um, and yes, it was a shame to leave having won the T20 World Cup. Um, but you know that that's uh, 
you know, that, that was a few years ago now. Um, but it was a shame to leave because it was something I felt, and I enjoyed both my spells. You know, I love working with the players. I still, you know, I'm still excited to see the, the team do well. I want the team to do well. Um, and I really believe that Sri Lankan cricket could be a, a fantastic team and a fantastic setter. And I, nobody can convince me that Sri Lankan cricket hasn't got fantastic players. And I was there, you know, in November, December with England, or October, November with England. Um, and despite England winning the series, is there are still so many talented players in Sri Lanka and, and it wouldn't take a great deal to actually make Sri Lanka successful again and every team has, has a cycle where you're on the up and then you're on the down so England had a down period last four years have been on the up period in one day cricket um, test cricket you know England are still trying to get to you know a strong position Sri Lankan cricket it will take a bit of time when you lose great players it takes a little bit of time but a bit of patience and support for the players and I think you'll see the, play, the team start to play well again. No, I wasn't forced. I wasn't forced at all. That what was... Circumstances? Yeah, there, there, there was, um, you know, there were situations that didn't make it easy for me and that was a pity. That was a great shame. But, you know, that, that was a long time ago. Um, and, and, you know, I, I've been back a few times to Sri Lanka since um, and I always love going to Sri Lanka and, and I, you know, I don't look back with any bad feeling towards anybody in Sri Lanka because I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really enjoyed my time and you know I'm you know I'm a massive fan of Sri Lankan cricket and I'm a massive fan of Sri Lankan people. Um, you know and I still keep in touch with an awful lot of people in Sri Lanka, not just players, but coaches and other people that helped me enormously when I was there. So you know I, I will always go back to Sri Lanka um, and, I, and I you know I, I think it's a it's a fantastic cricketing country because the passion from the supporters that travel and, and there's an awful lot of Sri Lankan I've chatted to here at games during this World Cup and, and their support that they get is magnificent it really is and they're, they're desperate for their team to do well it, was, it wasn't tough in the sense that we were winning a lot of games and we were very successful in that period um, but you know the, 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 the tough thing I always feel sorry for you know the players and the coaches because things change on two regular bases and, and you know Sri Lankan cricket needs a real period of stability and it, it needs to get some of the, the, well, it needs to get the right people doing the right jobs. And if you get the right people doing the right jobs and you have stability, then you have a great chance of being successful. Yeah. For a holiday, I'd love to come back for a holiday because <laughs> uh, I love being in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Look, I, it, you, you never know, do you? you? You never, never know. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy in the job that I've got now. I'm really enjoying it at Warwickshire. It's a great club. Um, but you, you never, ever know, do you? I mean, I, I, in 2007, when I first went to Sri Lanka, um, I, 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 you know, never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd end up in Sri Lanka at the start of that year. By the end of that year, I, I'm in Sri Lanka. I'm having a fantastic time and I'm working one of the best cricket teams in the world with five of the greatest players the country's ever produced. So, you know, I, I, you, you never say never in sport, do you? You never say never. We were very fortunate that, as I say, we had great players. We had great stability within the team. Um, and and we, had some, we had some really good people working with us. And, you know, in Mahela and Sangha, we had two people who are very passionate about Sri Lankan cricket. But, you know, Mahela um, was a great help to us because he, he took care of stuff around the team. Um, and he guided us through those those periods uh, and as I say you know when you've got someone like Murali in your team um, who is you know the greatest bowler that the game's ever seen 800 test wickets which will never be beaten you know Sanath Jaya Sawir 400 one day is 100 test matches Chiminda Vals 100 test matches you know you, when you've got that sort of group of senior players and you've got your talented others around and that's without you know someone like Dilshan you know Dilshan was fantastic for Sri Lankan cricket in that period Ajantha uh, Mendis you know absolutely you know there were two or three years where Ajantha was absolutely world class um, you know we won the Asia Cup with Ajantha six for 13 against India in Pakistan you know things like that were, were just absolutely brilliant to watch so we had so many talented cricketers coming through that period and as I say we, we were very fortunate that we had a lot of stability in Mahela was captain and then Sangha was captain so you know we, we, we had in that time in you know the four years that Trevor was there there were only two captains and, and that, that makes such a difference to the balance of your team. They're, they're, um, they are different in, in the way that the game is played and, and the one thing that the Sri Lankan 
team are very streetwise. Um, you know, they're, they're, they know how to win games. They're good fighters. You know, Sri Lanka, I, I associate with Sri Lanka a team that they fight to the end. They're very skillful. They know how to win games. They're a tough opponent. Um, you know, in, in England, England have learned to be a tough side. England have learned to be a resilient, strong side and have played fantastic cricket. But, you know, the, the, the two... The two are different, um, and, but it, you know the nature of the pitches that you play on play a big part of that. The way that you play the game, the conditions that you play in, that that makes a big, big difference. And it's always been a, a battle for Sri Lanka to come to England and play on wickets with a bit of grass on them, where the ball swings. You go to Sri Lanka and the ball spins and the wickets don't bounce quite so high. You know, so th th there are different challenges for players when they go to the different conditions, uh, and I think that's something that. As a coach, when I first came to Sri Lanka, you have to learn quickly about the conditions and you have to learn how to play to those conditions and get the best out of your team in those different conditions. I, I think last week against Australia, we saw a real performance from them. I thought, you know, they showed real skill and I thought they showed some real heart and battle in that game. And, and, and as I say, if you're, if you're constantly changing the team and changing the players, it's hard for players in that situation to be comfortable and to be really settled and play their best cricket. Um, I, I don't think this team are lacking fight. I don't think this team are lacking heart in any way, shape or form. I think this team just need a bit of love, a bit of support and a bit of continuity to selection and back people, back people for a longer period. And I think when you do that, you will see more success. Without any doubt, winning the 2014 T20 World Cup in Dakar, winning that was magnificent. I mean, that, that for me is still the highlight of my time as a coach. Um, it was the highlight for so many people. And to come back to Colombo and see so many thousands of people on the street enjoying the success and seeing the players enjoying the success and enjoying everybody in the country enjoying it. So it wasn't, it wasn't a selfish thing. It was actually watching the players enjoying watching the, the country, how much it meant to them, how passionate Sri Lankan people are about the game of cricket. That, that will always be my greatest memory in cricket. Um, and, and for me, you know, that, that, was, that was just such a great time. But I, I thoroughly, everything I enjoyed about Sri Lanka, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed um, beating India at home in a Test Match series. We beat India 2-1 in Sri Lanka. What a brilliant series that was. Winning the Asia Cup twice. You know, I was fortunate that we beat India, we beat uh, Pakistan in um, the Asia Cup in 2014. We beat India in Pakistan um, to win the Asia Cup there, which is the first time Sri Lanka had won the Asia Cup outside of um, Sri Lanka. Um, winning the first test match in the West Indies. Um, there were so many great things about the team, but you know, e even little things like Ajant Mendis' first ODI against the West Indies in Trinidad, you know, watching him get a wicket in his first over. Um, there were so many great things to enjoy. Um, Dilshan playing the scoop at Lords, you know, during that 2009 T20 World Cup, and, and we got to the final of that. We lost to Pakistan in the final at Lords. So there, there were so many great times. I think we got to number two in the world in test cricket, number two in one day cricket. There were so many exciting things in that period. Um, watching Chandimal develop as a young kid, I first saw Dinesh uh, at 17. Watching Angelo Matthews come on his first tour to Zimbabwe in a, in a five match one day series. He played there, played in the 2009 T20 World Cup and has gone on to be a fantastic player. So th there were so many small things that I watched that I thoroughly enjoyed and that's what has always attracted me to Sri Lankan cricket. I, I, I love to see them play, you know, I, I, even in Sri Lanka when, you know, we had the, the last series, England against Sri Lanka, as much as I wanted England to win because I was part of the England team, I wanted the Sri Lankan players to play well. I wanted them to make a good account of themselves. I wanted them to show the world how good they are. And that's why in this World Cup in England, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not cross or annoyed with the, with the players or the coaches. I just want them to play better because I want them to show the world how good they are. You know, I, I'm excited by the talent and the skill in Sri Lanka, and I want to see those players do better because I know they can do so much better.